Hey guys, I got a brushy mountain hive top feeder here, and I want to show you how I seal up the feeder to keep it from leaking. Obviously, they come sealed, and you shouldn't have to have to seal them up. But I have gotten a few, and uh, they've leaked. I'll fill the chambers up with water and test them, and I've gotten a couple that has, have leaked. So I'll just. From here on out, it's kind of a thin coat of the resin in there, so I'll go ahead and and seal them up myself just for added insurance. But uh, I'll show you how I do it, and the products involved, and what I do to seal them up. I just use this Bondo, it's a fiberglass resin. Some they recommend 80 grit sandpaper to to prep the surface, but I've got. 100 grit this is what I have that's what I'll be using just to kind of scuff the surface up to where it'll adhere a little bit better but I'll uh, take my sanding block I'll scuff this up clean this chamber the chambers out really well and I uh, even wipe it down with acetone prior to sealing it guys I've got a hundred grit sandpaper here and I'll just Just scratch up the surface of the existing resin. Just to help it stick a little bit. Probably don't even need to, to really do this step. But chamber scuffed up good and I'll just vacuum it out. Turn on the rag here and wipe the chambers out. And this stuff dries pretty much instantly. Make sure you get all the residue and oils and stuff off to where it'll adhere. The fresh resin will adhere properly. Alright guys, the resin I got, this came from uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. One of the two. It's just the Bondo brand fiberglass resin. And it's worked really well for me sealing these hive top feeders. Um, I mean, you can get into a whole other world of just uh, fiberglass resins and stuff, man. And it's a pretty complicated world, quite frankly. But uh, this stuff works for me. It might not be the best stuff on the market, but it sets up and works great for me. So this is not like a real crucial fiberglass piece. But anyway, it worked fine for me. You get it to big box stores. But the uh, last... The last feeder I sealed up, I made a cup of the product, and just in order for simplification this time, I'm going to do 10 ounces. 10 ounces of the resin. Um, each ounce, they say you need 10 drops of the hardener. So we're looking at 100 drops of the hardener, which equals a teaspoon. 
So just for simplifying it, I'm going to go with 10 ounces. All right, guys, got the fiberglass resin here. I'm going to get 10 ounces of that. I right, got 10 ounces of resin and I need 10 drops per ounce of hardener to resin. And this spoon here will be 100 drops. Be right at one teaspoon is 100 drops. And prior to doing this, I filled it up with a teaspoon of water and I know right where it lays. So. Guys, when you're working with this stuff, the first time I, I mix some up, I used a, it's like a 16 ounce solo cup. Man, when you work with this stuff, be careful with it because it gives, I guess it's an exothermic reaction. It gives off heat, but I swear I thought that cup was going to ignite. It got so hot, but uh, just keep that in mind. And I'm not a fiberglass expert or nothing, but uh when you're working with these chemicals, just keep that in mind. It could be a potential fire hazard. But it says uh, working time is about 8 to 12 minutes. So I got 10 ounces mixed up and I'll dump roughly equal amounts in each chamber of the hive top feeder. And it's mixed up really good. And um, I got a, just an inexpensive uh, paintbrush there to to spread the the resin in the feeder. I can. guys it's just a cheapo three inch paintbrush and I'll spread it throughout the chambers and uh, just work it up on top of the on the sides and uh, it works real well I'm just drawing it up the sides and it'll uh, just kind of fall back down. And this stuff sets pretty quick, so I mean, you got time to work it, but 
just keep in mind you can't be screwing around. And you can kind of manipulate it pretty thick up on the sides and then it'll kind of level itself out. But a cup, actually the 10 ounces is working real well, but to do two chambers on a 10 frame, um, 8 to 10 ounces works great. If you can see it just puddling up on top of the brush and then just let it, let it go. I mean, it's not rocket science. But it dries rock hard and does an excellent job waterproofing. But I'll just continue to work it just like I'm doing right now until it until it sets up. Guys, it's probably been, I don't know, six or seven minutes. And it's starting to, starting to set up. I mean, it's still plenty workable. But as you can see, I've just been pulling it up on the sides and letting it flow back down. Getting the corners good.
guys, I'm probably at the 10, 10 minute mark or so on working this and it's setting up pretty good. So I'm going to give it one final brush and then just let it set. And it'll self level and even itself out. But it's looking pretty good. Alright guys, just came to check the progress. It's probably been about an hour after I've you know, been letting it dry for close to an hour, I guess. And it's pretty well solid. You can see there it's a little a little wet there and it's a little tacky along the edge. But uh, in another hour it should be completely solidified and it'll be rock hard to the touch. But uh, I believe it's gonna going to be a good seal job. Alright, there it is all filled up and we'll check it in the morning. Alright guys, here's the Brushy Mountain Hive Top Feeder. It's been 48 hours. And we're going to check it and see if it's leaked. I don't think that it has, but my initial inspection proved otherwise, so we'll check it out for sure. And... As you'll notice, perfectly dry, so no leaks. Yeah, no leakage. <laughs>